Welcome to the first video of the Ethylene and Addition Polymer Chapter Playlist. In this video, we're going to cover balanced formula equations and how to write them. Now, uh, this dot point says construct word and balanced formula equations of chemical reactions as they are encountered. It's actually really important to know the more uh, the more chemical equations you know, the better, because they could actually come in the exam. So you could either be asked to write one or if you have a short answer question and you can add one of them into it, you get bonus points. So there's two reasons why you should know all most of your chemical um, reactions or chemical equations that are encountered during the HC chemistry course, because you definitely will get bonus points if you know them. And we won't be going for each and every single one in this video, but we do go for them in this actual playlist and in the all of the playlists in general. So if you will listen to them, you will like, go for every single one that you need to know as well. All right, so in this video, we're going to go for how to write them and what to focus on. So with a chemical equation, you need to make sure you have reactants on the left-hand side. So these are the reactants on the left-hand side and your product on the right-hand side. And you have this arrow here as well. And this arrow hints that you have a chemical reaction that occurred. So this is a chemical reaction. So these are parts always need to be part of your chemical equation. Now there's a couple different steps. So I'm going to go through how to write them and how to balance them. Um, or that balancing is important itself. So we have here, this is a pretty simple example of we might have a blue molecule and a red molecule. If these two join together, so we've got them separate at the moment. These are our reactants. They're going to be joining together. And these join together in a chemical reaction. So remember, this was the, the whole chemical reaction, CH for chemical reaction that has occurred. And now we have them joined together and forming a new product, so P for product. So we've got our reactants on the right-hand side, our left-hand side, and our product on the right-hand side. In the middle, we've got that arrow hinting at the chemical reaction that has occurred. So write reactants and products, and don't forget that arrow. But also write the state. So what I mean by the state is, is it solid, is it liquid, is it gas, or is it aqueous? A lot of people always forget that, that part of the writing chemical reaction. So we can imagine this might be, these two might be gas, so we just write G for gas, and then the new product that is formed is when they join together, that might be a liquid. So we say that's L for liquid. Um, so yeah, make sure you write the reactant in the product, write the state they're in as well, and that arrow to hint that a chemical reaction has occurred between the reactants and the product. That was first, the first part, and then we also need to make sure we balance equations. So matter is neither destroyed or created. That's one of the laws of the conservation of matter which is why we've got to make sure that the same amount of pro uh, atoms are on your left-hand side, so at, on the reactant side, as they are on the, on the product side. Because matter is not either created or destroyed. Atoms are matter. So in the chemical reactions, we don't add more matter. We just change it. We just change the way they are. So in this example, we had the, the reactants were by themselves first, and then the product um, formed to form a product. They joined together a product. Right? So they weren't added, there weren't more atoms added, they were just joined together. So matter should never be destroyed or created, which means we're gonna make sure that the same amount of atoms are on the left-hand side as they are on the right-hand side. And that's why we balance equations. So how to write it, so we're gonna go for one example. Um, so these will actually, this will be one that you do encounter in your HC chemistry course. You don't have to worry about it right now, I'm just, just to use that as an example, but I'm gonna go over this one in the next video. But um, there are three different equations. They both say, all three say the same thing. And what they talk about is ethane turning into ethene and hydrogen gas. But one is a word, one is a formula equation, and the other is a structural equation. So if I'll go for the word one first. In a word one, so this is a word equation. In a word equation, all you have to do is write down names of the chemical reactions for the reactants and the names of the chemical, um, chemical substances that take part as a product. So ethane, that's our reactant, R for reactant, and ethene and hydrogen, that's our product. So that's just a word equation, simply writing down the names of the substances. It gets a slightly bit more complicated when it comes to the formula equation. So this is the formula equation here. And for formula equations, you have to write it which what kind of atoms are in the actual compounds. So you don't write the actual names of them, you write the atoms that are inside. So in this case we've got ethane. Ethane has 
C2, so two carbons in it, and H6, so six hydrogens. So C2H6, that's the formula for ethane. And that reacts to form C2H4. And that here was the formula for ethene or ethylene. They're both the same thing. So that's C2H4. And then we've got H2, that's hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas is never by itself. It's always as H2. Um, so that is the, the formula of the formula equation. So now we, this was not the word equation. This was the formula equation where we write what kind of atoms are actually in the actual substances. And then we have the structural one as well, the structural. You don't usually write, do too much about structural equations when it comes to HSC. I guess it's always good to know as well what the structural equations are. And in the formula equation, all you did was you wrote, wrote what kind of atoms are, are in the actual um, formula, like how they combine. Whereas in the structural equation, you write what kind of atoms are in it, but also exactly how they join up. Right, so C2H6, we've got our two, so these balls here are meant to be the carbons, these gray balls here. So two carbons, and to each carbon we have three hydrogen attached. And we have for ethylene, or ethene, we have two carbons, they have a double bond, and, and four hydrogens, uh, two hydrogens attached to each carbon, a total of four hydrogens. And then hydrogen gas just joins together. Right? So that was the structural formula, where you actually go into the structure and compare the structure. So again, there's three different types of formula equation. You write about which atoms are in the substances, what, what, and, how, what atoms and how many of them. And we have got the structural equation, which shows you how, how many and what kind, but also exactly how they are linked up. And then we have the word equation, which is the easiest one, where we have ethane, ethene, and hydrogen. This example is just the words themselves. But one thing I forgot to add, and that was on purpose, was the states. So in this case, we have to make sure we also put the states for the formula equation. So we put the G for gas, because that's a gas, and G for gas for the ethene, because that's also gas. And a G for here as well, right? So they're all gas. So that was how to write that kind of equation, what you have to focus on. And the, and the next part is how to balance the equation. This example is actually a really easy example because it's actually balanced. Because if we look here, we've got how many, we have to count how many atoms we have on every side. So here we have two carbons and six hydrogens on the left hand side and we're going to make sure that same amount of carbon same amount of carbons and same amount of hydrogens are also on the right hand side so we've got two carbons here and four plus two so four plus two is six so we've got two carbons two carbons that's good that's balanced six hydrogens and six hydrogens that's also balanced and so this is a balanced formula equation so we don't have to add anything I'm not going to go through an unbalanced one in this one. I'm actually going to go over them doing the actual playlist just to keep this one a bit short. Oh yeah, there's two things we have to do. We have to write it first, making sure we don't forget the reactants and the products. Reactants on the left-hand side, product on the right-hand side. Write the state they're in, if they're solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous. Make sure you have that arrow, which hints at a chemical reaction. Um, if you're asked to write a balanced formula equation, you've got to write the formula for it which is what carbons are in it, uh, what atoms are in it, and how many of them. If you're asked to write a word equation, then you just write which substances, the names of the substances that take part. Um, if they're, you've got to make sure then that, if you have, especially if you write a formula equation, they're balanced, that the equal amount of atoms are on one side compared to the other side. And if they're balanced, you don't have to change anything. If they're unbalanced, you have to add something, and I'll go over that in the next video. Right, so hopefully that was helpful.